potato. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Ann Sanders. First of all, good afternoon. There's commuter chaos in the CBD this afternoon after a truck and tram collided on Sydney's light rail network. Leonie Ryan is on the scene where the crash has had a major effect on services. Good afternoon, and well, this accident has caused a real mess here on George Street with services suspended between Circular Quay and Town Hall. We understand it was around one o'clock this afternoon when a truck turned off George Street and the back of the tray clipped the tram, smashing a window. Now, there was one person on board. Fortunately, they weren't injured. The truck driver has been tested for drugs and alcohol. I didn't mean to do it. I was, I was coming straight and then the traffic controller, I think he is, said I have to go left, so I went to turn left and then they've come past me at the same time with swinging and just clipped the train. What has occurred and what will cause some delay for the next few hours is the fact that uh, one of the carriages has derailed and so we'll have to get some specialist equipment in now to rewrite the carriage. The impact did cause the tram to derail. It was hoped it might correct itself, but after testing it, such as rolling the tram back and forward, they were unable to get the tram back on track. So now it's going to take several hours before workers figure out how to lift that tram and get it back on the tracks. And Thank you very much, Leonie. An East Coast low is causing havoc right along the coast, bringing flash flooding, gale force winds and heavy rain. A severe weather warning is in place from Newcastle to the Victorian border, with rain lashing Sydney. The western suburbs have been hit hard, with parts of Windsor underwater, while Parramatta Weir is overflowing. The wet conditions have been welcomed on the state's south coast, bringing long overdue relief to drought-affected regions. Meanwhile, in Newcastle, rain there has caused flash flooding, with some drivers risking their lives and getting stuck. Natasha Squarey is in Newcastle. Tash, has the weather there finally eased? Well, Anne, while it's still raining here in Newcastle today, conditions have eased significantly after the heavy downpour that led to dangerous flash flooding. Some parts of the city copped 152 millimetres in just 24 hours. The severe weather sparked a wave of calls for help from trapped drivers to trapped residents. The driver of this bus, along with eight passengers, had to be rescued from fast-rising floodwaters near the university around 5.30 yesterday afternoon. Volunteers from the SES used an inflatable boat to get everyone to dry land. They also rescued four other drivers who were trapped in their cars by flash flooding. Lambton resident Anne Sturt also needed help. She, along with her neighbours who have a baby, were trapped as the heavy rain came rushing into their homes. Water was coming through with such force I thought that I couldn't get out. I could see my car floating. If I stood in that water, I'd get bowled over. And it was the same story across several suburbs. The underground car park at Westfield Katara flooded and many businesses today were closed to clean up. Oh, ferocious. All the rivers started banking up and flowing over. The SES has been out and about today powering through jobs, but thankfully the flash flooding didn't cause any significant damage. More rain is expected here tomorrow, but it seems Newcastle has already had its most intense rainfall. And Thanks, Tash. Residents along the edge of the state's central coast have had a nervous wait after a high tide once again threatened their properties. Those at Womberall feared their already damaged homes would be back in the firing line, but the threat has subsided for now. They're on high alert, however, for another high tide due to hit around 2am tomorrow. We'll have the latest from the Central Coast with our reporter live on the scene coming up in this bulletin. New South Wales has recorded another 17 cases of coronavirus overnight, nine of those via community transmission. Three cases have been linked to the Thai rock restaurant outbreak in Wetherill Park in Sydney's west, while another two have been confirmed at the chain's Potts Point location. New South Wales Health is investigating whether there is a link between the two outbreaks. The owners say no workers travel between the restaurants. We only have to tragically look at what's happening in Victoria to realise that could be us in a few weeks. If we let our guard down, that could be us. This thing takes off very quickly. Meanwhile, organisers of a Black Lives Matter protest are back in court attempting to overturn a ban on tomorrow's event. We'll bring you details as they come to hand. 
Victoria has reached yet another grim new milestone with a record 532 infections confirmed in the past 24 hours. Premier Daniel Andrews says more drastic action could soon be taken to try to stop the surge. Cameron Bowe has the very latest from Melbourne. Victoria's second wave of COVID-19 is still building. 532 new cases is another record daily high. The vast majority have unknown origins, placing even more pressure on contact tracing investigators. Workplaces, particularly aged care centres, the current hotbed of infection. We have too many people who have symptoms and they are going to work. And what that means, even with mask wearing, even with hand hygiene, Six more Victorians have died, five women who ranged in age from their 70s to their 90s, and a man aged in his 50s. Five of those deaths were due to outbreaks in aged care. Our hearts are with um, the families and the residents. We're doing what we can and we're asking for everybody to, to support us while we try and get on top of what's an awful situation in Victoria. The virus is still spreading rapidly through aged care homes. 15% of the state's active cases of COVID-19 are linked to the sector. St Basil's aged care at Faulkner in the city's north has the worst outbreak with 84 cases. A severe spike at Epping Gardens has seen its cluster total triple in 24 hours to 77. In order to stem the spread, some aged care residents with COVID are now being transferred to private hospitals. The level of testing remains high, with a further 17,500 tests conducted yesterday. 245 Victorians are in hospital with COVID-19, 44 fighting for their lives in intensive care. Cameron Bowe, 7 News. The Prime Minister says Australia must push forward in focusing on the economic road out, even as the coronavirus crisis escalates. Political reporter Taylor Aiken joins me from Canberra. Hello, Taylor. What was Scott Morrison's message? Get Australians back to work. That's the call from Prime Minister Scott Morrison as he announced the COVID-19 Coordination Commission will now shift its focus to economic recovery. The commission was initially set up by the government to provide advice and support about how to manage the pandemic response, including securing PPE and accessing testing equipment. The advisory board will now shift its focus to how to ensure Australia's economy recovers as quickly as possible by advising the government on how to minimise and mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on businesses while also driving new jobs growth outlined by the government's JobMaker plan. We're about creating jobs. Jobs is the way out economically for Australia. Bringing the best minds together bringing the country together to get behind the effort to ensure that we recover strongly from the COVID pandemic. Commission Chair Neville Power saying Australian businesses will need to learn how to adapt to operating within the restraints enforced by coronavirus. We'll be looking at how we can create as many jobs, get as many people back into work as possible and learn to live with the restrictions of the coronavirus of physical distancing, personal hygiene and quick response to outbreaks in businesses across Australia. Six new members will join the Commission board, skilled in financial services, small business, infrastructure and workplace relations. The Prime Minister saying while the health crisis isn't over yet, Australia must keep moving the economy forward. Thank you, Taylor. Meteorologist David Brown joins us now. Afternoon, Brownie. What's the very latest on the weather front? Yeah, and well, as you can see, it's raining across the city. In fact, it's raining throughout the entire Sydney Basin as we go to air. And yes, we are in for a bit of a wet night. Uh, at the moment, it's sitting under 14 degrees. Feels like 10 in that uh, southwesterly breeze. Now, the strongest winds have passed and been confined to the coastal strip. You'll notice uh, Balambi recorded uh, 91 kilometres per hour. The airport a short time ago, around about 70 clicks. Not so windy, of course, in our west. Uh, maximum wind speed at uh, well Penrith there around 50 kilometres per hour and that was during lunchtime. As we go to the radar the thing that stands out is this massive rain band that's affecting the southern half of our state. There's the eye of the storm at the moment just sitting off the Illawarra coast with a massive feeder band going all the way into the region 
drenching rains across the uh, the uh, southern coast and of course the adjoining slopes and you can also see that rain has been spilling across the Great Dividing Range. In fact it's pushing north all the way towards the central ranges. Now let's go to our weather camera network. This is Bondi at uh, high tide. Yes, messy waves continue to roll up onto the uh, beach. It looks like these big waves will continue for about another 24 hours. But having said that, the weather's on the improve. The showers should become less frequent tomorrow and gradually contract to the coast as this southerly breeze moderates. But at the moment, in Bondi, feels like 7 degrees. Not so cold in Penrith, where the wind is not as strong. In fact, it feels like 11 degrees. And, of course, I'll have the local forecast in detail, top of the hour. Great to see you then, Brownie. Thank you very much. Still to come in Sydney's afternoon news on 7, drama at the border, Sydney visitors turned away as the Queensland Premier delivers a threat. Royal Rift reveal of the conversation insiders say destroyed Harry and William's relationship. And too tired to go on, the mission to save a dog from England's tallest mountain. This is a very difficult thing for me to judge. It was uh, extraordinary. You moved me. And that's just the start. Let's do it. Gave me goosebumps. America's Got Talent on the new night, Tuesday, 7.30 on 7. We know you've always worked hard for your money. In these uncertain economic times, who do you trust to protect your wealth? Invest with Latrobe Financial, Australia's multi-award winning wealth manager and leading credit specialist. Trusted by Australians for more than 60 years. I was a dancer all my life, but then when I did retire, I didn't have any super. To be on the pension, it was an enormous struggle, and it got to a point where I thought my house was going to be repossessed. It really worried me. When I found Home Safe, I realised that I could use the equity in my home to pay off my loan. It just cleared all that stress and that worry. HomeSafe, the unique alternative to a reverse mortgage for over 60s. At Coles, we're helping lower the cost of healthy breakfasts with delicious Heritage Mill Traditional Oats 1 Kilo Pack, down down to $3.50. Find more ways to save at coles.com.au. Coles, good things, great value. Centrum provides multiple health benefits in just one tablet. Centrum, complete from A to Zinc. With Mook Delivery, Macca's comes to you so you can enjoy it at home, fast, safe and contact free. Search Macca's website for your local delivery partner. Harvey Norman, everything for the heart of your home. Buy now on 60 months interest free and get a bonus gift card up to the value of $500. Save up to $1,000 on AEG cooking appliances. Save up to $500 on selected Miller appliances. Save $500 on this Electrolux cooking package. Save $750 on this Bosch cooking package. Great deals, great savings. Plus 60 months interest free with a bonus gift card up to $500. Limited time now at Harvey Norman. I juggle, but even when I juggle, I still suffer from chafing. Step one, they put these lycra panels between the legs. It glides when you walk. You can buy them online at step1.life. Step one, don't juggle these. If your income has been affected and you were injured at work, you need advice now. Step away from the nurse. Contact Shine Lawyers to get the compensation you're entitled to. I need the right lawyer. Shine Lawyers, let's right wrong. In the world we were living in, life was sweet, bitter sweet. All we needed was a little help, help to realize that another life was possible. They gave us the courage to change, to change for good, to change for goodness. Baby Bell joined the goodness. You're watching 7's 4pm Sydney News and this is the view from Parramatta. Right now it's 14 degrees there. 
To some breaking news now, there's been an accident involving a police motorcyclist on the M2 motorway. Paramedics were called to the Lane Cove Road off-ramp at Macquarie Park after reports a rider had come off his bike in wet conditions. Two units responded, but the officer has escaped serious injury. Traffic is beginning to slow in the area. A man's been charged after allegedly leaving a young woman trapped following a car crash in Sydney's west. The crash happened at Woodville Road at Guildford around 10.30 last night with one car spinning into a pole. The female driver was cut free by emergency workers and taken to hospital with neck and back injuries. Police say the driver of the other car fled the scene and was arrested at a home on the same road. He'll face court next month. A man's gone to extreme lengths to avoid COVID testing, running from police after landing at Gold Coast Airport on a flight from Sydney. Isabel Martin is on the Gold Coast. Isabel, this comes as Queensland tightens its border restrictions. Well, there was a dramatic arrest down here at Kira Beach on the Gold Coast this afternoon after a 24-year-old man from Sydney ran after his domestic flight landed at the Gold Coast airport, evading police and coming here to the beach. He ran through a block of units. He had an outfit change before he was finally arrested on the beach. We've just seen heaps of police everywhere, all over the place, uh, searching for somebody. Came behind me into the out onto the beach and that was when the yeah, they took him down. It comes as restrictions tighten further at the Queensland New South Wales border. A lots of jams. I keep missing the exit. Something's got to change, eh? Fairfield declared New South Wales' latest hotspot, joining Campbelltown and Liverpool. It means more than 600,000 people from 104 Sydney suburbs are now locked out of Queensland. Please go online. Please update your border declaration. Please monitor the news about new hotspots being declared. Since July 3, 1 million border passes have been applied for. 2,200 people have been turned around at Queensland borders, many desperate to move north. Every single day we are monitoring what is happening in New South Wales. That is what Queenslanders would expect me to do. But a change.org petition has gained thousands of signatures calling for the Queensland-New South Wales border to be closed completely. We will not hesitate to declare hotspots or we will not hesitate, if it gets out of control, to slam the border shut. It comes as Queensland recorded no new cases overnight. Hurricane Hannah, now a tropical storm, has left a trail of destruction across parts of the United States and Mexico. In Texas, buildings were torn apart and roads flooded. While northern Mexico also felt Hannah's power, wild winds tearing down billboards and trees with residential streets now underwater. Witnesses have recorded what appears to be a tornado making its way over northeast England. The funnel cloud can be seen whipping up debris as it moves across the sky, although it caused only minor damage. While not common, the UK does experience an average of 30 to 50 minor tornadoes a year. Kim Jong-un has called an emergency meeting after North Korea reported its first case of coronavirus. According to state media, a North Korean citizen who crossed into South Korea three years ago returned last week with a suspected infection. With the country already under strict lockdown, Kim has imposed even tighter restrictions on the border city of Kaesong. And too tired to carry on, this tuckered out St Bernard needed to be rescued from the tallest mountain in England. Daisy was out for a weekend hike with her owners when she became exhausted and refused to budge. A rescue team was called in to help bring the out of puff pooch down on a stretcher. There were a few obstacles along the way, but Daisy finally made it home where she's now recovering. Harry and Meghan are not denying bombshell details revealed in a controversial upcoming biography. As Sarah Greenodge reports from London, a rift between royal brothers is said to have been sparked by William calling Meghan this girl. Well, Finding Freedom is yet to hit the shelves, but extracts are being published in the Times newspaper here in the UK, revealing more about why Harry and Meghan left the royal family, or at least from their perspective, uh, claiming that their problems started at the very beginning of their relationship. They didn't trust anyone inside the palace, referring to AIDS as vipers. The biography claims that one senior member of the royal family referred to Meghan as, quote, Harry's showgirl, and that Harry himself took offence when Big Brother was 
William pulled him aside after they'd fallen for each other, advising him to take as much time as you need to get to know this girl, which Harry apparently thought was quite snobbish and condescending. It also confirms that the duchesses, Kate and Meghan, were never the best of friends, that their relationship really never developed, with one source claiming uh, Meghan was disappointed that she and Kate hadn't bonded over the unique position they shared, but she wasn't losing sleep over it. The relationship between the Cambridges and the Sussexes uh, became so frosty that by March this year at the Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey, they barely spoke a word to each other. A spokesman for the Sussexes says Harry and Meghan were never interviewed for this book, that they didn't contribute directly in any way, but they were certainly very aware of it. Their friends have supported it and are quoted extensively throughout the biography, and they haven't denied any of the stories so far. Next in Seven's Afternoon News, unprecedented access, the police raid, we were told we'd never seen. Stamp duty axed, big news for home buyers. Find out if you are eligible next. And in sport, the Roosters fire back, saying they can fit Sonny Bill Williams under the salary cap. Tonight on Seven News with Mark Ferguson. We're tracking the wild storm lashing our coast, a grim coronavirus record as the mask battle continues and farewelling a star of the screen. Tonight on Seven News at six. Seven season of magic. I must be the one to kill Harry Potter. Harry Potter and the first Deathly Hallows. Wednesday on Seven. Don't miss out. Energy Australia's $50 sign-up credits are in their last days. Switch and get a $50 electricity sign-up credit and a $50 gas sign-up credit. But hurry, offer ends July 31. Join today. Discover new details about your family history with Ancestry. Simply type in a name and let Ancestry guide you on a journey of discovery. Start searching for free at ancestry.com.au. We're late. I need coffee. Hungry Jack's $2 medium coffee is all about great taste and getting it exactly when you need it most. Try our new, richer, better tasting $2 medium coffee all day at Hungry Jack's. A lot of people have sensitive teeth, but gum health is really important as well. If you've got sensitive teeth, you should be looking for something to help with the sensitivity, but you should also be thinking about, do I need to look after my gums? Using the new Sensodyne Sensitivity and Gum Toothpaste not only deals with sensitivity, it also maintains gum health when used twice a day, every day. I think it's fantastic to have a dual action toothpaste. Two benefits with the one toothpaste, what a great idea. Why join Booper? Because you'll get six weeks free on eligible products. That's six weeks free, because right now every saving counts. Booper, because life happens. T's and C's apply. Call now to find out more. Gentlemen, look at yourself. Now look at me. Now look at yourself. Down there. You're probably wearing cotton underwear. I'm wearing Step 1s. They're made from bamboo. They breathe. Are you happy? I'm happy. Go get them at step1.live. The best thing to happen to privates since Ryan. Experience a whole new world of sleep and comfort with Pliga Beds and Chairs. Enjoy 20% off our entire range with display stock up to half price. Live life with Pliga. 1-800-648-648. The suburban fender bender. In the white car, Australia's fastest talker. In the silver car, Australia's fastest typer. Going head to head to make a claim with Amy. Hello Amy, I've just been in an accident. I need to make a claim to damages to the rear of the car. It's a beam unit, I want with the sweet interior. The weather is fine with the light side of the beast. Good, great, lovely. So it's nothing major. Easy peasy lemon squeezy cheese for that nice one bite. Done! Whether you're a talker or a typer, claim your way 24 hours a day, seven days a week with the new Amy app. Reason. From the moment we're born, we're conditioned to find it. Why does it feel good to dance? Why are we drawn to the water? We're consumed by a need for explanation. But some things just defy rational sense. When you move beyond what's known and into what's felt, you don't need a reason. A new highly skilled tactical task force has been assembled across New South Wales to respond to situations like this. 
Dangerous raids carried out in suburban Sydney. There are three on their stomach, on the roof. We are apprehending the first. He is crawling to the team. Incredible access, and we'll have more on that exclusive story tonight in 7 News at 6. Stamp duty is being slashed for the first time home buyers as part of a plan to boost the economy. It's hoped thousands will take advantage of the scheme and help generate jobs in the building industry. But as Chris Ma reports, it'll come at a cost to the budget. Well, to boost the construction industry, the state government is taking a $78 million hit on the state budget with a short-term scrapping of stamp duty on many first homes. Now, in a bid to boost the economy post-COVID and generate construction jobs, stamp duty will be lifted for an estimated 6,000 first home buyers for purchasing new homes. The 12-month moratorium on stamp duty lifts the current threshold from new housing priced at $650,000 to $800,000, with a sliding scale up to $1 million. For an $800,000 property, it means a saving of over $31,000 in tax. The changes take effect from August 1 and have been welcomed by housing groups facing a slump from COVID and placing building industry jobs at risk. The state government says the stamp duty relief will make a real difference for those trying to afford their first home. It's the great Australian dream uh, to buy your first home and we want to get as many young families uh, into the housing market as possible. These changes aren't about buying your dream home, it's about assisting you buying your first home. The building industry says it will boost confidence in future developments. The construction industry is in fact by far the largest applicant for JobKeeper assistance. To sport now with Mel McLaughlin and the Roosters are ignoring the doubters, Mel. Yeah, they are. And co-captain Jake Friend says conjecture over their ability to fit Sonny Bill Williams under the salary cap is just outside noise. Clubs are privately questioning how the two-time reigning premiers can sign a player of Sonny Bill's stature at a bargain price of around $200,000. No, nah, it's not something I've read into or really worry about. We've built a good culture and players are wanting to come and be a part of that. We do not show fear or favouritism, you know, just because it's the Roosters shouldn't be penalised. Commission Chairman Peter Volandi says he's open to making players' salaries public if the Players Association agrees to it. The NRL's annual Indigenous round coincides with Latrell Mitchell's return from a two-game suspension. Souths are relishing the chance to celebrate their long Indigenous history in the lead-up to Thursday night's game against the Dragons at Cogra Oval. Mitchell's return is a huge boost for the injury-hit Bunnies. We're excited to have him back and it's a, it's a great boost for us to and get him back through the circumstances that we're under at the moment. Yeah, the Rabbitohs have lost two in a row. Manchester United qualified for the Champions League while Aston Villa stayed up by the skin of their teeth on a drama-charged final day of the Premier League. After a one-all draw with West Ham, Villa players huddled around a radio to listen to the end of the Arsenal-Watford game to see if they'd done enough to avoid relegation. And the news is the news they wanted to hear. Watford and Bournemouth were relegated, costing both teams upwards of around $300 million in lost broadcast revenue. Manchester United defeated Leicester 2-0 to deny the Foxes a top four finish, while Chelsea defeated Wolves 2-0 to grab fourth and the final Champions League qualification spot. Jack Miller was one of eight riders to crash out of a chaotic Andalusia MotoGP in Spain. The Aussie star slid off the track with 15 laps to go, but his tumble was tame compared to what happened to South African Brad Binder. Oh, vicious stuff. Oh, dearie me, what an eventful day for Brad Binder. Fabio Cordararo won his second straight race while Valentino Rossi was third. The Italian legend now has a staggering 199 podium finishes in MotoGP. England star Stuart Broad is on the verge of becoming only the seventh man to reach 500 test wickets. Broad tore through the West Indies batting lineup on day three of the third test at Old Trafford, taking six wickets. Edge and good catch, good low catch from Joe Root. Broad has five. After a quick fire 226 from England, Broad reduced the tourists to two for ten in their second innings, ending the day on 499 test scalps. The West Indies need 389 runs with two days of the series decider to play, and they might be up against it, but it's great to see the West Indies looking okay. For sure. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mel.
This afternoon's top story is next with the wild weather warning. The latest details is our city cops are battering. Virus surge, infections reach a dangerous new high as city protesters head back to court. And virtual kidnapping, the police warning over a dangerous new scam. You always remember your first date. People will talk about the stars aligning and a few sparks flying at the moment. He's found the one. Or has he? We're here. I feel at home already. I've sort of already marked my territory. Tonight, 7.30, one girl will go home. Who have you chosen? New Farmer Wants a Wife. Tonight, 7.30 on 7. I was a dancer all my life. But then when I did retire, I didn't have any super. To be on the pension, it was an enormous struggle. And it got to a point where I thought my house was going to be repossessed. It really worried me. When I found Home Safe, I realised that I could use the equity in my home to pay off my loan. It just cleared all that stress and that worry. Home Safe, the unique alternative to a reverse mortgage for over 60s. What's your name? Ah, oh, sorry. I've already got a boyfriend. Did someone say KFC? I don't care. I love it. Today, as we work to stay fit and healthy, and medical science continues to explore new ways to save our lives, it's gold nanoparticle cancer research that offers new hope for the future. There's more to Australian mining. Save up to 10% on your first year's premium when you get a new Allianz home insurance policy online. OK, done. Oh. Feeling. Search for a quote today. Nature's Own Joints and Muscles range helps to relieve mild joint pain and support muscle function. You Nature's Own. Be body smart. Get 50% off now at Coles. Alan has seen the whole world. Time to discover what's nearby. Trivago compares hotel deals from major booking sites, making it easy to find your ideal offer nearby. Time to explore Australia. Hotel Trivago. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Ann Sanders. Welcome back to our Martin Place headquarters. These are our top stories on 7. Rally banned. Black Lives Matter protesters lose their appeal, but they're vowing to march anyway. Tram crash chaos. The light rail network thrown off course after a collision with a truck. A shocking new high in Victoria. 532 COVID infections revealed overnight, along with six more deaths. And New South Wales has been hit by wild weather Western Sydney dealing with rising waters as central coast homes hang in the balance. We have breaking news now on the Black Lives Matter protest that was planned for tomorrow. The Court of Appeal has upheld the decision handed down in the Supreme Court yesterday, meaning the rally will not be allowed to go ahead. Organisers say, however, they will protest despite this afternoon's outcome. A low pressure system continues to cause havoc along the New South Wales coast with rain, high winds and big surf impacting beachfront properties. Peter Fegan joins us from Wombrel on the central coast. Pete, homes are still under threat there. And they certainly are. The uh, peak high tide here at Wombrel was between 1.30 and 2.30 today and that was always going to be the big test for those 18 homes that have been affected along the beachfront. For residents now, they'll have to wait for it to be safe enough to return home, and They need the tide and that swell to drop before they can even inspect any new damage. Margaret Bryce is one of those residents that lives along the beach here, Anne, at Wombrel, and she says the last two weeks have been extremely difficult for her and her family. I'm actually standing only a few hundred metres away from her house today. She invited us up onto her balcony today, one of the few homes along here that you can actually legally do that now, Anne, and she gave us a good insight into the damage and how her family's been going. Let's take a listen to uh, what she said earlier. Extremely frustrating. I've got, I'm one of the lucky ones that hasn't been evacuated because my house is on piers. But I have neighbours texting me now, running to their houses, 
watching more of their yards slipping into the ocean, worrying how much more will go tonight. And in some good news, and that uh, low pressure system will start to ease tomorrow, but it'll still be a nervous few hours for coastal residents, especially here in Wombrel, because there is a high tide expected again at 2 a.m. and the swell will rise. But these conditions, however, and have been perfect for the experienced board riders. A swell of seven and a half metres has been recorded off Sydney today. Surfers were towing into some bombs at South Narrabeen this morning, certainly not for the faint-hearted Anne. And I'll have all the latest tonight from here in Wombrel, uh, also the latest from the south coast and, of course, Sydney Anne. All right, Peter Feen reporting. Thank you very much, uh, Peter. Some spectacular pictures there. And further north, that system has hit Newcastle, inundating homes and streets. Stranded bus passengers had to be rescued from flood waters at the University of Newcastle overnight. The State Emergency Service used an inflatable boat to rescue 10 people trapped on board. Residents in the area are being told to brace for more wild weather in the coming days. A truck and a tram have collided on Sydney's light rail network, throwing timetables into chaos. A window on the tram shattered after it was hit by the back of a turning truck. One passenger and the conductor were on board at the time. The truck driver was left shaken, but thankfully nobody was hurt. I went to turn left and then they've come past me at the same time with swinging and just clipped the train. Specialist equipment will now be brought in to realign the carriage onto the track. Delays are expected throughout the evening between Town Hall and Circular Quay. Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews has taken aim at people going to work while sick, saying they are the drivers of the state's COVID crisis. In the largest daily spike there, 532 people have tested positive in the past 24 it hours. It doesn't matter what you do for a job, it doesn't matter what industry, what sector you work in. If you are going to work with symptoms, if you're going to work when you're sick, then you will inevitably be spreading this virus. There have been six new deaths in that period. Five of those are connected to outbreaks in aged care facilities. Millions of dollars in ransom demands have been paid out in a sophisticated extortion scam known as virtual kidnapping. As Evan Batten reports, eight cases have been reported to New South Wales Police, each targeting Chinese students. And this problem has been going on for years, we're told, but escalating in recent months, prompting this warning today by police. It's a very bizarre scam where the victims actually end up recording their own ransom video, tying themselves up, rope around their legs or bloody bandages, gaffer tape across their mouths in very threatening looking positions. Those photos and videos, of course, sent back to their family members in China who were then forced to pay the money. These videos, though, are very confronting. It all begins with a phone call pretending to be from Chinese officials or government members from the embassy demanding small amounts of cash. Once paid, though, it quickly escalates to more serious demands, larger amounts of cash. The victims are then instructed to check themselves into hotels, take the photos and switch their phone off so that when family members call, they just can't get through. The scammers are very polished at what they do and that they progress it over a number of days or weeks to gain the confidence of the person. Police tell us they're aware that so far more than $3 million has been paid out in ransoms. In one amount alone, a staggering $2 million paid to these fraudsters. Now, despite the difficulty involved in catching these offenders, police say they are investigating, confident that there are other victims out there who haven't yet come forward. They really want to speak to them if they've got any chance of catching these scammers. Anne? Thanks very much, Evan. A toddler has been sexually assaulted at a child's play centre in Penrith. The two-year-old girl was found injured in a storeroom at the centre on Mulgoa Road yesterday afternoon. It's believed the girl was attacked by an unknown man. Anyone who witnessed suspicious behaviour in the area at the time is urged to please come forward. A, a child between two and three can only provide so much information. We're going to work the rest around what other people have seen and heard. Police will now look through security vision as well as follow up contact information of those who entered the facility under COVID restrictions. An elderly driver who was charged over the death of a mother of two could be in more trouble. 89-year-old Keith Lockery is accused of negligent driving occasioning death, but that could be upgraded as crash investigators review the case. Liz, 
Albanoz died when a car ploughed into an Epping cafe in February. Lockery will be back in front of a magistrate next month. Diplomatic tensions between the United States and China are now clear for all to see with the dismantling of the US consulate in Chengdu. Moving trucks were seen pulling away from the building overnight with staff forced out after Beijing ordered its closure. Streets have been closed and barriers set up with the commotion drawing crowds of onlookers and government protesters. High temperatures and poor storage are being blamed for a series of explosions at an ammunition depot in Baghdad. The images were shared on social media with Iraqi military denying suggestions of a targeted attack. Federal police are stationed at the base, though it's unclear if there were any casualties. If cafe crowds are too much to bear, this eatery in Mexico City has the perfect solution. Giant teddies seated alongside diners, ensuring everyone maintains social distancing. With infections running high in the region, patrons and staff agree these cuddly companions are a friendly way of staying safe during the pandemic. We're live to ComSec for the latest on your money next. Plus, calling all COVID survivors the next critical step in Australia's virus research. The last of the golden age, remembering the life and career of Olivia de Havilland. And it's 14 degrees in Cronulla. Brownie will have Sydney's forecast soon. Captain Strand, we want you to come down to Texas to build an entire station from scratch. OK, but I choose the firefighters. Have you got what it's crew can't just be good. They got to be the best. Rob Lowe. Let's show them what we got. And Liv Tyler. In Texas, you do what I say, Captain. Get ready for the new action thrill ride. 911 Lone Star. Tonight, 8.30 on 7. This winter, cut your cold and flu short with EasyCold and reduce the severity of symptoms. Shorten your cold and get better quicker with Easy Cold. Cookie people, cream people, crumbs people, clean people, twist people, lick people, dunk people, munch people. It's on the play, people. If you twist, lick, dunk, then you're my people. We are Oreo people. These undies make you chafe. And these, as well as these. Chafing is horrible. These are step ones. The inventors of no chafe underwear. They've got these lycra panels between the legs, which means no more chafing. You buy them at step1.life and never chafe again. Thanks for calling ING. There's Adam speaking. How can I help you? Uh, no, I'm currently working from home. Oh, you can call any time, so... Um... Sorry! <laughs> and she's currently nibbling at my toe right now. Yeah, working from home was a bit tricky at first, but... There's definitely been some stray farts, um, hasn't there, mate? And now your loan's on a fixed rate. Can I help you with anything else? No, uh, you made my day. Well, whatever 2020 throws at you, we're here for a chat any time. Too easy. Super Cheap Auto's mid-year sale catalogue is out now. Get 30% off Armour All Detailing Chemicals, Accessories and Air Care. And 12 cans of Export Deep Freezer for $18. Shop now with contact free, click and collect. <laughs> At Spotlight Super Sale, save 30% off a huge selection of wall art and wall decor, 30% off Sistema food storage, and 40% off the entire range of rugs. So you can hang it, store it, and cozy it up for less. Sale on now. At Spotlight, it's what you make it. How's that for serenity? Can care be better at home? Oh, it's sanctuary. Your home's a bit of a sanctuary. Yeah, for me, rehab at home, uh, it, it gave me a huge amount of flexibility to be able to do the things I wanted to do. It allowed me to unstress and be in the moment in your house in your own comfort zone, which was really good for me and my state of mind. Search Medibank at Home to see how we're creating better choices for our members. Trash, someone else's treasure. Aussie families turning spring cleaning into cash. The boom in second hand on Sunrise tomorrow. Researchers are calling for Australians who've recovered from COVID-19 to come forward in the name of science. It's part of a study to see how the virus impacts people with diabetes. Tristan Vorius reports. 
Good afternoon. Well, relatively speaking, we don't know much about COVID-19. And while a vaccine is being developed, other important studies are also taking place to determine how this virus behaves. A group of Queensland researchers want to know if COVID-19 has a different effect on people with diabetes. People with diabetes have a really different immune response. And we're seeing this already in clinical studies with patients with COVID that they tend to suffer from more severe disease. So far, only a handful of volunteers have come forward to take part in the study, including Brisbane mother, Nicole Beasley. She caught COVID-19 on a ski holiday in the US. Coming home the plane, I slept the whole, the whole way and the morning I landed, I had the scratchy throat and a fever. I, oh dear, I'm in trouble. Taking part in the study is as simple as giving a blood and urine sample. I'm happy to do whatever I can to, to help um, this crisis. Basically, we'd like to meet people with and without diabetes um, who've had COVID-19 and recovered. In the news tonight at 6, we'll have the full details on this study and how you can get involved if you've recovered from COVID-19. Checking finance now with James Tower at Comsec. Hello, James. How did the local share market start the new week? Yeah, afternoon, and it was a relatively cautious start to the new week. The ASX 200, though, still managing a small lift up around 20 points or a third of 1%. Investors still certainly keeping an eye on those rising COVID cases coming out of Victoria. So what was a real saving grace for the market today was the performance of the uh, gold miners. And we had gold hitting fresh record highs during the session today. Some of the big names like Newcrest Mining up around 5%. So some big improvements there. Uh, not so good for the likes of the financials and some of the aged care providers as well. Estia, which has two uh, aged care homes in Victoria under COVID-19 outbreaks, falling about 7% today. Uh, we had some losses coming through from retailers and also travel stocks as well. It was a much stronger day for the Aussie dollar, up to around 71.3 US cents. James Tower from Comsec. Thank you, James. There was a commemoration ceremony to mark 67 years since guns fell silent along the Korean demilitarised zone. On July 27, 1953, an armistice was signed to end three years of brutal fighting. More than 17,000 Australians fought as part of the United Nations multinational force. 340 lost their lives. I have stressed always the importance of recognition. It's important for morale in the time of conflict and it's important for the peace of mind of veterans in their, their later years. The armistice remains in effect today, but a peace treaty has never been signed. Sydney 6pm News is coming up with Mark Ferguson. Hello, Mark. What are you working on in the newsroom? Yeah, good afternoon, Anne. We're tracking that severe weather system with a warning in place along the New South Wales coast with more wild winds and heavy rain on the way. We have spoken to Newcastle residents whose homes were swamped by floodwaters as a new threat hits Sanctuary Point. There are 17 new coronavirus cases here in New South Wales with deep cleaning underway at a Cabramatta restaurant as the community transmission threat grows. Tonight, the Black Lives Matter protesters lose their appeal. In Victoria, a grim new record, 532 new cases as the battle over masks continues. See the fresh rant from a woman who threatened Bunnings workers. Detectives are hunting a suspected predator over a sickening attack on a two-year-old girl at a Western Sydney play centre. And extraordinary video why police are launching tough new tactics in our suburbs. Those exclusive details are coming up. And all that and plenty more, Sydney 7 News tonight at 6 o'clock. See you then, Fergo. Thank you very much. 4.48, so let's get a check on Sydney's traffic. Good afternoon, it's Andrea Panamo here in the Tax Tips Traffic Chopper. In the CBD, a truck and tram have collided. George Street at Essex Street, it's closing the road north and eastbound. And in Denham Court, we are just hovering over the Brooks Road on a ramp to the Hume Motorway. There's an accident that's pulled over to the right now. A tow truck is at the scene. Motorists are getting through on the left hand just fine, but delays are trailing back onto the Brooks Road off ramp. Worried about money? Get a COVID-safe tax refund on the spot as fast as cash in the bank. For an instant tax refund, visit taxtips.com.au. T's and C's apply. Olivia de Havilland, one of the last remaining stars from Hollywood's golden age, has died aged 104. Looking back at a career that spanned more than 50 years, here's Paul Caddock in Los Angeles. Good afternoon, a legend from Hollywood's golden age. Olivia de Havilland was already a rising star when she had her defining role of Melanie in 1939's Gone with the Wind. You're so wrong. 
Scarlett loves you a great deal. It delivered her first Oscar nomination. She would eventually win two Academy Awards for Best Actress through a career spanning six decades and some 49 films. Her on-screen chemistry with Australia's Errol Flynn creating movie magic through the 1930s and 40s, appearing together in nine films. I did adore having Errol Flynn kiss me. The most charming and most magnetic and most attractive man I think I've ever met. De Havilland was also a pioneer, successfully suing the Warner Brothers studio in 1944 in a big win for actors' rights. It was such a frightening thing to do. She felt what was unfair was a contract that could keep you in bondage to a studio for many, many years. She also had a legendary rivalry with her younger sister, actress Joan Fontaine. Honoured throughout her life, President George W. Bush awarded her the National Medal of Arts, and three years ago she was made a Dame Commander of the British Empire. Olivia de Havilland passed away peacefully in her home in Paris. She was 104. Australian swimwear label Sea Folly is set to be back in the hands of its original owners. After going into voluntary administration last month, the brand is likely to be sold back to American private equity firm Locataton. There have been more than 80 bids from other interested buyers. Creditors will vote on the administrator's recommendation next Monday. Next in Seven's Afternoon News, David Brown will be here with your very latest weather forecast. For one day, AFL the next. And it starts with four big nights in a row. Wednesday, two powerhouses clash. Thursday, Demons versus Power. Friday, two of the hottest teams in the comp. Then, our Swans against the Saints. History will be made with four nights in a row. Starting Wednesday, go to the footy on 7, mate. When you've got a lot on the boil, books pretty much get the chop. But Audible can help you fit them back into your life, even when you're cooking up a storm. Bread, wine and books. Audible! With over 400,000 audiobooks. Sorry. It's books that fit with real life. Oh, Soz, that's me. <laughs> you know what it's like. Oh, there's another one and another one. Download now and get your first audiobook free. You know Yumi's great tasting dips. And now they've created an amazing new range of veggie burgers. If you're trying to eat less meat, they're a deliciously easy meal everyone will love. With the goodness of fresh veggies, herbs and spices, and no preservatives, they're proudly Australian made and bursting with flavour. Choose Yumi's for great tastes you can feel good about. New Yumi's veggie burgers. We're for real. It's only natural to want what's best for your toddler. 100% grass-fed milk is better by nature. We know that nature provides the best, which is why 100% grass-fed milk is free from palm oil, GMO and growth hormones. 100% grass-fed milk encourages growth and development, whilst gentle on toddler's tummy and easy to digest. So you have the peace of mind knowing you've made the natural choice. 100% grass-fed milk, made in New Zealand, better by nature. So do I pay tax on JobKeeper? I'm working from home. What can I claim? We've all got tax questions this year. Thankfully, at h and Block, we have the answers. Let's get you started. Maximise your tax refund. Book an appointment today. Sudden death now on the towel flick. Alec. Yes! The Aussie's got him a beauty! Australia has a new Mr Whippy chuck a flake in mine. Another make it look easy moment from Sportsbet. She's found the super nerd sign of weakness. He gets a bit twitchy when he's not sure, so he's got a bit of a tell. You pretty much summed up the super nerd. But can she use it to beat him? The game that'll really get him twitchy. Who is the younger daughter of King George VI? New The Chase, weekdays at 5 on 7. This weather report brought to you by Bridgestone Select for tyres and car servicing. Get on the ground! <laughs> 
this dummy. We are apprehending the first. Tough new tactics. The raid we were told you'd never see. Exclusively on 7 News at 6 o'clock. We have breaking news just in now. Two buses have collided in Sydney's southeast. Emergency crews are at the scene on the corner of High Street and Anzac Parade at Kensington. These are live pictures from our helicopter. Around 10 passengers were on each bus at the time. Two of those have been injured. It's believed one person has been seriously injured. David Brown is back. He has the latest weather forecast. A lot of water on the roads, Brownie. Certainly is, and yes, challenging times ahead uh, this evening. But look, areas of rain continue to stream in from the uh, from the south. In fact, uh, the uh, southern part of the metro area has had some good falls. But uh, the heaviest rain now is in fact impacting southern parts of our state. Minor flooding is expected along our southern rivers tonight and tomorrow. That's a big turnaround from the drought conditions just a few months ago. Now, less than uh, 2 degrees separated the overnight low and a maximum of 16.1 degrees by uh, late morning. Drenching rain, you will notice, is falling to the south again. The rain is falling... Well, in fact, it's dumping as snow at Threadbow, where it's currently only 1 degree. In Canberra, it's very soggy. It's only 10 degrees. Head north, different story. In Coffs Harbour, it's dry and generally clear. 21 degrees. Now, severe weather warning stretches from uh, the Victorian border all the way to Newcastle. Uh, improving tomorrow, yes, this low is heading out to sea. Very, very slowly, taking most of the rain with it, but it looks like the gales will linger about the uh, south coast and the big waves to continue. Interstate tomorrow, more sunshine for uh, Brisbane at around 22 degrees. In sharp contrast, Melbourne cold and cloudy and around 15. For our city, wet overnight. Few showers clearing tomorrow afternoon, probably from around about mid-afternoon. Might even be earlier, around 70 degrees for a top. Let's go to our seven-day outlook. Have a look at this. A return to fine conditions. Mostly sunny weather unfolding on Wednesday. Remaining dry all the way as we head towards the weekend. This is the first weekend in August. Clear skies to continue into the early part of next week. That's latest from the Weather Centre. More at 6 a.m. All right, Brownie, thank you very much. And that is Sydney's 4 p.m. news for this Monday. Mark Ferguson will bring you 7 News at 6. I'm Ann Sanders. Stay with Seven Now for The Chase Australia and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.